Sierra Oscar from 92, that incident in Marlpit Road, show me dealing. Received. I think we've lost her. I reckon she's been lying here all weekend. There was a faint pulse, Sarge. I tried to keep her going. I'm sure you did, Debbie. Who found her? A neighbour, Mrs Sharp. She noticed the curtains hadn't been drawn all weekend and came round to have a look. She'll be going to St Hughes. Right, Pam, will you go with her? Give us the keys. Sarge. Sarge. So what's the problem, Deb? Doesn't seem right, Sarge. The paramedics think her injuries are consistent with falling down the stairs. Suspected broken hip, arm and cheekbone. Well, it certainly looks that way. That's what I thought. So have a look at all this. That's some nice stuff. And lots of it, Sarge. Now take a look through here. Right. Oh, just because she slept down here doesn't mean she never went upstairs. Yeah, but there's something else, Sarge. Have a look upstairs. Let's see. It's a bit different, isn't it? Certainly is. So where's the furniture? Don't look like she lived up here at all, does it? That's because she didn't. According to Mrs. Sharp, Miss Stadden had chronic arthritis in the feet and couldn't climb stairs. Take over, I'll get the toilet. So, if she couldn't get upstairs, then how on earth did she fall down the stairs and kill herself? Morning. Morning. Mm. Oh. Right, well, we've got a sad death on Mulpit Road. Certified at the hospital, possible suspicious circumstances. Yeah, that'd be mine, Polly. The DI's at court. Sergeant Cry, I'd also like you to let the reporting officer see the investigation through. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's Debbie Keane. She's supposed to be a lad as part of her probation. I'll wait for CID. If you can only have a word with Mrs Sharp, see if she can tell us anything else. Right, Sarge. And you are? Mrs. Farmer. I'm Miss Stadden's home help. What's going on? I'm afraid Miss Stadden has been found dead. But what happened? Well, we're not too sure at the moment. Perhaps you could help us. Would you answer a few questions? I suppose so. Well, first, I'd like to know when you were last in the house. And whether Miss Stadden ever went upstairs. Could you hold on for just a moment, please? Danny, Tosh, Tosh. The body's just gone off to St. Hughes in the ambulance. Yeah. Apparently there was a faint pulse when Debbie first checked her. The home help's turned up, so we should be able to get a bit from her. Where is she? Oh, she's gone. Thanks, Mr. Sharp. That's really helpful. Debbie, have you seen a woman go this way? Dark hair, 50s, green jacket. Yeah, that way a couple of minutes ago. What's happened? Oh, Miss Stadden's home help done a bunk. I'll tell you about it later. Sarge! There's something a bit odd, Sarge. Mrs. Sharp said that the upstairs of Miss Stadden's house was as full of furniture as the downstairs. Really? She had some lovely things. One piece especially, an old desk with beautiful carved legs in one of the bedrooms. When were you last in the house? Before today? A fortnight ago. I take her library books around every fortnight. Yeah, thank you, Mrs. Sharp. I'll leave you with it then, Debbie. I really must find this woman. Well, there's nothing to go on as regards the death, Sarge. No sign of a struggle or any disturbance. Well, she didn't pitch over of her own accord, did she? No. Find her home help? Afraid not. She seems to have vanished. Well, why'd she take off? I don't know. I just wanted to ask her a few questions about the lack of furniture upstairs. Yeah, I noticed Miss Stadden lives down here. So why was she making her way up the stairs? Yeah, especially if she's arthritic. The woman who found her, Mrs Sharp, says there was a lot of furniture up there when she last looked. And some nice pieces, according to her. Yes, Sarge, but the weekend before last, she said she saw Mrs Farmer, that's the home help, loading some furniture into an estate car with a young man. She said she thought it was a bit odd, but, you know, wasn't sure she should interfere. Right, do you get a description of this man? Young, good-looking, wearing glasses about 5'11". Get down the social services, Debbie. Get an address for Mrs Farmer. Toss, check the neighbours, see if anyone else saw this man. Sarge. <laughs> 
morning. Terry Cotton, Home Care Manager. Oh. Sorry to hear about Miss Stabbin, but um, don't quite understand what all this has to do with Mrs. Farmer. We'd just like a quick word with her in the routine inquiries. Do you have her address? Yes, yes, yes. Um, come with me. Is it anything to do with missing furniture and effects? Uh, You'd better come in. Things were found to be missing before we see when one of Mrs. Farmer's clients died. A relation complained about it. Well, the police informed. It didn't seem necessary at the time. The effects turned up at Blackham's auctioneers. Mrs. Farmer said the deceased asked her to get them valued for her, so there was nothing we could prove. Well, there certainly was an awful lot of stuff missing from Miss Stadden's house. Oh? Ah, there is another thing. We did caution Mrs. Farmer over another matter. Go on. It's no big deal. She was recommending the services of a chiropodist to her clients. What's wrong with that? Well, it's against the council guidelines. We have our own approved register. I gather Miss Stadden had no family, no next of kin. No. There is a friend, though, a Mrs. Gladison. Well, someone will have to tell her. She'll be very upset. Or would you like me to tell her for you? Would you? They were very close. It's very kind of you to let me know. At my time of life, death comes as no surprise, of course. But I get fed up with finding out in the local paper. It's no trouble, Mrs. Gladison. Would you like a cup of tea? I really must get back on the beat. Oh, no one's time for anything these days. All right. I'd love one. Thank you. I could tell you a bit about Alice. Oh, you laugh, you know. Alice and I did everything together. We even got arthritis together. And we shared the same chiropodist. You need a chiropodist for arthritis? Of course. You've only got to put on a shoe and you get pressure sores. Mrs. Farmer, our home help, she recommended him. What's his name, Mrs. Gladison? Tony. I forget his surname. Yeah, there's no sign of Mrs. Farmer at a house, Gov. She's done a complete bunk. And no sign of the missing furniture, either. No, not in her place. Alan's checking the auctioneers now. Right, keep him posted. Right, that's interesting. Uh, it's Debbie Keane, Sarge. She's got some more information on the young man with the estate car. Hmm? It's the old girl's chiropodist. Chiropodist? Yeah, Debbie's just trying to get her surname now. He doesn't sound much of a villain to me. Thank you very much. He's been helping Miss Stadden and Mrs. Gladyson pay their gas bills. Yes, Deb. The auctioneers remember yeah, I'm right. selling this stuff in your list, Sarge. Oh, right. Right. Selling it, not valuing it. Oh no, the definite is one item they particularly noted oh, this 18th century oak bureau with sloping fall front and four chamfered legs, 1,475 quid, and that's the name of the settlement check. Sarge? Yes, it's me, Sarge. No, Sarge, it's Debbie. She's got the full name of the chiropodist. It's uh, Tony Pilbeam of Canley Chiropody Surgery in Brookvale Road. She's on her way there now. Bingo. I think he's getting some returns on those gas bills he's paying. Jackie. Gentlemen. Mr. Pilbeam. Yes. I'm DS Pierce. This is DC Lions Sunhill. Can we come in? Of course. Except this one. What exactly is this about? I do have a client in five minutes, so. Yeah, we uh, won't keep you a moment, Mr. Pilbeam. Mrs. Farmer? Do you know an Alice Stadden? Yes, Miss Stadden is a patient of mine. When were you last to her house? Ten days or so ago. Why? I have to tell you that Miss Stadden was found dead this morning. I am sorry. And we were wondering why your name was on a cheque for furniture taken from her house and sold at Blackham's auctioneer. I see what this is all about. Right. So you can explain it then? Of course I can. I simply sold some items from Miss Stadden. And put your name on the cheque? Yes. She wanted cash, you see. You know the elderly. Excuse me, Mr. Pills. Leave me alone. Need a word, Sarge. Yeah, just a minute, Debbie. Yeah, but this is Mrs. Farmer, Miss Stadden's home help. I found her coming out the basement. You two know each other? Mrs. Farmer is a patient of mine. I thought you'd gone home. So you already knew that Miss Stadden had died? Mr. Pilby? It was his idea to sell the furniture. I didn't want to do it at all. Mrs. Farmer, what are you talking about? Right, well, whatever it is, you can talk about it at the station. You're both under arrest for suspected theft. 
Mrs. Farmer led me to believe Miss Stadden wanted the furniture sold because she wanted to raise some money. But Mrs. Farmer gives a different version of events. She says it was your idea to sell the furniture. And you concealed the fact that she was in your basement. She turned up in a terrible state, saying she hadn't had permission to sell the furniture after all. Downstairs is a restroom, Sergeant. I was just trying to help her relax. So you knew you'd both done something wrong, even before we arrived? I knew she'd done something wrong. I didn't want to get her into trouble. Doesn't look like honesty is the best point, does it? And what about Miss Stadden? Do you talk to her about it? She was at the daycare centre when we went round to collect the furniture. I assume Mrs Farm was all above board. I never thought to question her. What happened to the cheque, the proceeds from the sale? I cashed it and gave the money to Mrs Farmer to hand over to Miss Stadden. All I did was sell some furniture for a patient. That's not a crime, is it? You try to help someone, look where it gets you. He's lying. It was him that told me we had permission to sell it, that she said we could split the money between us. And you believed him? He said it was her way of saying thank you. I told Miss Stadden how grateful I was. I thought she seemed confused. So why did you run off when Sergeant Cry was asking questions this morning? I knew I'd broken the council guidelines. We're not supposed to take gifts of any kind. Mr Pillbeam told us he gave you all the proceeds to give to Miss Stadden. No, he's supposed to be giving me a share, but I haven't seen any of it yet. He hasn't given me a penny. Mrs Farmer, how do you explain the fact that Mr Pillbeam was paying Miss Stadden's gas bills for her? And those of her friend, Mrs. Gladysson. Does that sound to you like someone who'd want to take a backhander from an old lady? I don't know. It's not as if it's the first time, is it? That you've been suspected of taking clients' personal belongings? I've told you. Mr. Pillbeam told me that Miss Stadden had asked him to sell the furniture for her. I didn't steal anything. Looks like she's the one who needs the money. And Pillbeam? Yeah. He thinks he's a bit of a charm massage. Gives me the creeps. Yeah. I mean, even if Mrs. Farmer did suggest selling the furniture, why did he have to get involved? And if we believe his story, how do we prove he gave the money to Mrs. Farmer to give to Miss Stadden? Mm. Well, maybe they're as guilty as each other. Fell out dividing up the spoils and Miss Stadden cut for it in the middle. Mrs. Farmer helped Pilbeam find his property clients, didn't she? According to that social services bloke. Hmm. OK. You and Tosh get down to Pilbeam's place. Check out his story with his receptionist. What story? Well, he's Mr. Generous, right? Now, when I checked the appointments book at his surgery, the page was virtually blank. Maybe he's more strapped for cash than we think, Debbie. You finished at lunchtime? Yeah. Well, Mr. Pilby must have cut me back. He's still just out, you say. Then, could we just have another look at his appointments book before you go? We just want to check something that you told us. Won't take long, Jackie. Nothing to worry about. There you go. Thank you. Well, he's not exactly rushed off his feet, is he? I'm not always there to take the reservation. He might take some himself and not note him. But then he might not. <sighs> so where does he find his patients? It's tricky. Most of the elderly use state registered chiropodists because they can get them on the NHS. Mm. Sometimes they have to wait a while for home visits, so they use chiropodists like Tony. And what sort of chiropodist is that? <sighs> Did it by correspondence course. Never set eyes on a foot till he opened up. Don't tell him I told you that. No, I won't. Well, thanks. OK, the PM results are through. Miss Stadden definitely fell from a height. Time of the fall was last Friday afternoon, three days ago. And what's more, the state of the arthritis in her feet would have made it impossible for her to climb stairs. So who took her up then? So how'd she get up the stairs? I don't know. I really don't know. I wasn't there. You had a nice little racket going, didn't you? You and Mr Pilbeam. You found his old ladies for him and he gave you a backhander. Nice bit of pocket money. Trouble is, Mr Pilbeam comes out squeaky clean. What with paying those old ladies' gas bills. Which doesn't look too good for you. Does it? Where were you last Friday between noon and midnight? I was at home. I do washing and ironing for my old ladies. I, I watch some telly. Alone? 
I didn't do anything to Miss Stadden. Mr. Pilby made me help him sell the furniture. He was blackmailing me. Really? We met a year ago when he was just starting off. He needed clients. I needed the money. I just couldn't cope on what the council pays. So you swapped clients for backhanders? Well, being a home help now, it's, it's not like it was in the old days when you were really appreciated. Little gifts at Christmas, the, the odd fiver. And why not? We're like family to them. We're all they've got. Which is why the council has guidelines, I presume. It's five pounds an hour for doing what we always did, plus what the district nurses used to do. Would you empty catheters for that? Change the incontinent? So, it's tough nowadays. Join the club. Mr. Pilbeam was threatening me. He said that unless I helped him sell the furniture, he'd tell the social services about our arrangements. They'd have sacked me. I had no choice. But you were still prepared to take what you thought was your share of the money. We check Pilbeam's patient list for social services and almost everyone is registered with them for domiciliary care with Mrs. Farmer. Yes, when well, one of her clients needs a chiropodist, she introduces him to Pilbeam in return for a small fee. About 30 quid a throw, according to his receptionist. Something of a symbiotic relationship, I'd say. So if they've got such a nice little number going, then why are they calling each other liars? Perhaps they became greedy. Sorry, Gav. Got her as soon as we wrapped Mrs. Farmer up. Did he get anything? Uh, she's put her hands up for the theft of the furniture, but she says that Pilbeam was blackmailing her, and she swears that Pilbeam had the money from the sale. So does that make any sense? Well, Pilbeam needs the money. His business is doing very badly. And if it wasn't for the clients that come care of Mrs. Farmer, he's going to the wall. Then why the hell is he paying off these old girls' gas bills? And what was Miss Stadden doing falling down a flight of stairs that she couldn't even climb? Mm. Debbie. Well, sir. We don't often get a spectator. So who would you be questioning? Well, there is one other person who has been treated the same as Miss Stadden. The gas bills and TLC. I'd be having a word with her. Mrs Gladison. If we can find out why a hard-up chiropodist is paying her bills, we might find out what he's playing out with Miss Stadden. Anything interesting, Debbie? Very, sir. Will you tell Mr Meadows what you were telling me? Well, this young lady got me thinking just now with your questions about Tony. And I wondered if I hadn't been a little foolish over him. How do you mean? Well, after you left, I made some phone calls. And do you know, it's not only my gas bills and Miss Stadden's he's been paying, but at least six others. Philby must be shelling out hundreds. Why? I said, I wondered. Then I realised... We're all on our own, Miss Stadden and everyone he pays the bills for. We've got no family, no relations. Two or three already have made him their beneficiaries. And my friends tell me that includes Miss Stadden. Do you mind if I use your phone? Of course. I found a new witness, Gov, a neighbour who was out earlier. She phoned in to say that she remembered seeing a young man answering Pillbeam's description, visiting Miss Stadden around tea time on Friday. Excellent. So we can place him at the same. Mm. But why would Pilbeam want to harm Miss Stadden? He stood to inherit everything soon enough. That's what we need to find out. Danny, it's your interview. Who do you want to take with you? Come on. The only reason I'd want to tell you anything is because you got it all wrong. We just want to know what you were doing at Miss Stadden's last Friday afternoon. Tape's rolling. There's no one here to twist your words. Just tell us how it was. All right. It was an accident. And that's all you can charge me with. So go on. I changed her dressings. We'd had a cup of tea. While I washed up, she must have started crawling up the stairs. I came out. There she was, halfway up. She couldn't get up the stairs, Tony. Try again. I'm telling you the truth. She was crawling on her hands and knees up the stairs. She's crawling up to check the stupid woman. Yeah, to check what you had stolen from her. It would have been mine anyway. I just needed cash. So what happened? She got suspicious. She said one of her neighbours, Mrs Sharp, had asked her if she was moving out. She'd obviously seen Mrs Farmer and I moving the furniture. Miss Stadden was crawling up to see what we'd taken. 
You had to go and ruin everything. Before you say any more... I did nothing wrong. I tried to stop her. I went up to her, told her she was being stupid and tried to help her back down the stairs. But she struggled. Insisted on seeing her pictures, her antiques. So what did you do? Well, I tried to carry her back down the stairs, you know, grabbed her wrists. But she fought me. Well, I lost my footing and... I... I dropped her. You dropped her? Yeah. She struggled. It was an accident. You manhandled an 80-year-old woman down the stairs and you think it was an accident? I said she struggled. Miss Stadden died as a result of your actions. Yeah. When I found Miss Stadden this morning, she still had a faint pulse. She took three days to die. It was just bad luck, wasn't it? Bad luck you didn't call an ambulance. I couldn't. No. You couldn't, could you? She might have survived and you might have been caught. Instead, you left her to die, leaving you with a nice fat check and the proceeds of her will. If that's what you want to think. But it was an accident. An assault at most. That's all I'm going to admit to. That's all you'll ever prove. Mr. Pillbeam, I'm arresting you for the manslaughter of Alice Stadden. Leave it out. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Interview terminated at 14.05. Manslaughter? You must be joking. I barely laid a finger on her. I'll be out in a few months on the assault with all that money waiting for me. Will you tell him or shall I? Go ahead. Now, second thoughts. You can tell him, Debbie. I think you've earned it for today. Sarge? Well, don't you know you said one law? Of course. Do you mind letting me in on the secret? Certainly. You haven't exactly helped yourself admitting to the assault, Mr Pilbeam. You've given the CPS a strong case for manslaughter. And if you get convicted of manslaughter, you won't get a penny from Miss Stadden's will. Is this true? Once there's a criminal conviction, it's not possible to profit from the proceeds. I do believe we finally wiped the smile off your face, Mr Pilbeam. I'll get you a copy of this. I'll be listening. 